Good morning, folks. Morning. Uh, hold on a second. Mm. Is it just the, no, no, there's a bunch of bugs here. Okay, cool. What is the theme of the day? Sure. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just getting my virtual background. I had a bit of a reset of my entire machine this weekend. And we got some other folks. Hey, perfect, Sam. I was just reviewing some of your notes. And I think that'll work. Here we go. All right, we got KubeCon behind us. We survived, at least as far as I know. <laughs> Everybody did. Hey, Sam. Hey. So you didn't like the star upon there? I guess I don't know why I wound up in the middle. Like somehow my space became a star. So yes, yeah, so I was just reviewing your PRs, or the reviewing your comments on the PR. Uh, um, we're gonna. So I'm, I'll put the notes here in the Slack. Sorry. Uh, what are we in? We're in Zoom today. Okay. Uh, chat. So if folks could. Sign in, we'll get started here in a moment. And the two things we we're gonna talk about was the, basically just the JWT update for the signature prototype. Um, that uh, is fairly concise, we can go through it. There's been a lot of feedback on it. Um, the one I was hoping we'd spend more time was on the distribution API. Um, and I was thinking a little bit about it in the sense of, I'm not sure if this group is as particular about the details as the OCI distribution owners. Um, but before I brought it, the proposal there, I figured I'd run it by here, this group to see if there's any feedback we should incorporate. Um, some folks overlap both, so that's great. Um, so we can kind of pre-vet it here. Was there anything else people wanted to talk about today? Take that as a no. Okay. Um, all right, let's see if I can do some screen sharing in addition to everything else. Let's take a look here. Tear off. Share screen. Yeah. Share. Okay. Am I sharing this time? Can folks see? Yep. Okay, great. All right. So this one is basically um, the PR we've been talking about for a while now. The only diff we we originally had it as a, a separate PR. We had a couple different PRs, and we'll talk about PRs on top of PRs. Uh, but basically, this takes the discussions we've been having around the encoding of the JSON object, which is basically how do we take this and sign it and just take that formatting and put it into an actual JWT. So if we click into the signature spec, we'll see that uh, she always updated this with the basically it's just putting everything together it just winds up as this big, you know, blob, which is kind of the I think was the feedback everybody was providing. Um, we did also make this a full uh, descriptor by putting the media type in as well. Um, 
And I think that was all that was related to this one. We didn't get into the additional keys yet. That'll be another PR. This is really trying to wrap up this one to have something to start building, basing upon. So if we go back, sorry, just for context, if we go back to this diagram where we're trying to get an end-to-end -end workflow going, um, that we use the NV2 client to sign an artifact and push the artifact to the registry. Right now, this PR really focuses on these two pieces to sign and verify, uh, generating a JWT now. Uh, in the other uh, proposal, we'll talk about using uh, something like ORAS to push into the distribution spec. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here of detailed discussion um, sorry, I'm scrolling through myself just to remind myself. Yeah, so here is, oh, this is just showing the two types. Um, this is, sorry, let me make sure. Uh, yeah, this is the signature spec. All right, so any questions or conversations on this one? Take silence as good. <laughs> Looking for edit. Let's see. Let's reset everything here. Okay. Um, I think we'll we'll focus more on the distribution spec. I mean, like I said, I think we've covered everything in here. In the pull request, there are uh, ignore this. This is uh, this is this one that we've talked about here. There is a new thing that we're working on doing a tough proposal. It is very much a work in progress. I wasn't even ready to talk about it this week. So um, I really want to focus on these two. So if, if everybody's cool, maybe uh, the next part of the conversation I wanted to have is around how we actually uh, not make PRs on top of PRs and have some kind of base to work from. So we'd really like to get this one merged in. This way we can open up issues, we can you know, do additional PRs, but we have something in the root because right now we have an empty shell. Um, thoughts, conversations, comments? I mean, the other option is to merge things into a branch rather than ma master. Oh, I see. So we could have a branch for uh, a whole proposal that could be merged into and then reviewed as a whole at various stages rather and then we could merge to master rather than having work in progress because I hadn't thought about or, that. Or or we could I mean alternatively we could have separate repos for prototype so proposals that people could then open issues against more easily. I'm, I'm wondering where to put issues because there's some there's some comments on this PR, for example, that you say are planning to be reviewed in phase two. Right. And I don't want them to get lost, but they kind of are going to get lost right now, regardless, because they're um, because they're just comments in a review anyway, which is not a good place really to keep things in the long term. And that's what I'm trying to resolve. I hadn't thought about a branch. So that's a good idea. The the pro and con of doing a branch is so one that we've always said this is this whole NV2 client is a prototype. Like we're not setting this expectation. It's a spec. It's a, anything other than that. I guess what we could say is we could create a branch that the branch is the prototype and then the NV2 becomes the final thing that we decide that we, we want to, when we rev the prototype into an actual reference implementation, we can make the master of NV2 be that reference implementation as opposed to the prototype that we can throw out and make an NV2.1. I actually hadn't really thought that far out. I mean, otherwise, I mean, I'm happy we could just have lots of repos and anyone doing a prototype can have a repo as well, I, it, um, but then I'd kind of rather it was called Proto Proto One or something or something like that. 
So, I, so the main reason I was thinking of merging from a PR was so that we had a stable base that we could build from and then do subsequent PRs on it with comments and issues and so forth to track. There's nothing that says that you couldn't do that exact same thing on an MV2 with a Proto1 branch um, because then we merge into that branch and then um, we can evolve from there. Then whenever we decide that we, we are ready to do the reference implementation MV2, that would go into main. Um, so that, that meets the goal that I was shooting for while leaving the MV2 route to be the thing that we ultimately finish on. I kind of like that. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. Anybody else? Thoughts? Okay, so uh, notes. Uh, create uh, an MV2 uh, branch for prototypes main, let's call it main, we didn't switch it to main yet, we'll get to main, we get for the final, the final, that just sounds wrong, for the ultimate, yes, ultimate, I like ultimate, ultimate uh, reference implementation. Okay, cool. Um, all right, that's good. And then uh, if I can, and if there's anything that's obvious, open, issues for open topics in this PR, in the, uh, in, in this, what is this? Number two PR. And if I've missed anything, then people can open up additional issues. That'd be good. I'll, I'll try to capture the ones. I'll do the live work there. All right, so that's uh, the JWT conversation. Uh, the next one was the distribution spec. If I can get my mouse in the right place. Um, this one is a little more interesting. There is a bunch of discussions here, to be fair, and we're um, and I would very much appreciate the feedback. But I think as Sam was looking at it, in fact, I was making a, a fun comment response is that his question was exactly what I was kind of expecting. Um, so, all right, what we have here, all right, let's kind of go through this. This is what I wanted to spend the most time on. I, we've been working through, now that we have the workings of a signature, I will evolve the different signature types. So let's not get focused on the format of the signatures per se, because we'll have multiple formats and we'll work through those. But once we have a signature, we do need to figure out how to push it, how to find what signatures are available, and of course, how to full, a pull, um, pull a signature uh, so that you can then go verify the content. And then there's just some examples for references because everything's a digest. So you need some examples of what digests. Uh, so basically the big conversation we've been having is this, uh, how do we persist uh, a signature in the registry? And I've had a couple of different thoughts and some new thoughts when we start thinking about uh, metadata storage, which we'll ultimately want to deal with as well. Um, so first of all, the one is, the one we've been working with so far, because it, it just works, well, the persistence works, the discovery doesn't work, so the persistence works. So it is using the OCI pattern where you take a manifest, because it's the only thing we support, we don't support index yet, and I can put a, dig um, a config media type on it that effectively says that is, this is a notary v2 object. In the config object itself, I would store the JWT. Uh, and I just noticed this is, no, no, it is, it is right. So all this is saying is this is an image manifest. I, you don't actually need to specify it there, but I put it there for clarity. But the media type of the config says it's a notary v2. And notice we've changed it to JWT uh, for the most recent thing. Inside the config object is the signature which, uh, did I put it here? Yeah, so here's the, the actual signature um, has the digest that it refers to. So Sam was kind of asking the question going, hey, this is kind of confusing that a, a manifest points to another manifest, which is what this arrow indicates. 
And it, if you know a registry, you would say, yes, this is confusing because manifests don't know how to point to other manifests. But if a config object does, then logically it does point to the other one, but that reaction is exactly why I don't really like this option. But this is an option that works today um, in, uh, from a, a pure persistence and being able to work with a signature. Um, option two says, okay, an index is already designed to reference manifests, right? So we have multi-arc manifests, we think of them today. And when for registries that support indexes, when you take an index, it's got to point to a set of manifests and we do all the appropriate garbage collection. And if we don't, then there's holes, but that's because that's the expectation, right? You have an index a reference manifest. If you want to delete the index, you can delink the manifest, but you shouldn't be able to delete the manifest if an index still references it, because then you kind of wind up with an orphaned index. Um, the, the only challenge with that is today, an index doesn't have a way to say it's anything other than a multi-arc manifest. Um, so what we've always said with the artifact approach is we always wanted to take the pattern that we did on manifest and say this manifest isn't just a, isn't a runtime image, it is a helm chart, it is a, a thing. Uh, we wanted to be able to do the same thing for index. So index now says this isn't a multi-arc manifest. It is a CNAV. It is a signature object. It is um, a collection of software that includes an SBOM, if you will. So that's what we've been trying to propose here. And then if we do that, then there's actually two options. One, the uh, how do I want to walk down this? I hadn't thought how to explain this. Um, the index references the manifest that it's, it is signed. Then the question is, where is the signature? That's what I was trying to get at. We can follow the same pattern we had with the one above here where the signature itself is in the config object. So now um, the index points and I can go and get this index and then I have the signature already. It's a, it's kind of immediate. And that's what we kind of call out the pros with this approach. Um, the downside obviously is index doesn't support a config object. So we can neither specify that it's a signature object, nor can we store the signature in it. So that's the things that we're saying we want to change. Um, we said we wanted to change the index, the object in the config on an index anyway. So we see this as use case n plus one. Um, and we've got this one uh, tracking that there. The, for full, for full clarity on, on some of this conversation, so um, I just drew a blank, I've got, anyway. Uh, he, uh, I forgot his name, I'm sorry. Uh, on the OCI conversation, we're having this whole conversation with Alexa, sorry, that's what it was. I have Alexa and Alexis. Uh, Alexa was making a comment that it was kind of weird that a config object, which is supposed to be configuration, can store something else that could then, you know, it, it's actually just another blob. Um, and while true, we have lots of things like that, layers or blobs, we call them layers because that's just the terminology that's used. But if you wanted to go to the full extreme, the full purist scenario, then what we would do is we would have an index that points to the thing it's signing that index could actually point to another manifest that the manifest was the signature object. And then it would have a layer that was the signature. So that's kind of one way to do that. Um, the pros and cons we've kind of called out here. It, it, the pro is it does conform to a purist view of how we have registries being a, a reformed DBA. I really like purist data structures. Um, this one, but the con is all it's really doing is taking the blob that we would store it, we would store it an index config object, which we want the config object anyway. Instead of storing the blob there, which is what indexes are, it moves it to another manifest and requires another layer of indirection that both adds garbage collection uh, work we'd have to do in registries uh, and additional API calls. So you would effectively say, hey, I want all the signature objects for 
this thing, it's going to return a collection of indexes because the index is the way it refers to individual uh, signature objects. And then I'd have to go get the manifest to then go get the blob. Um, so that's kind of the pros and con. And the last piece that I'll just mention, because I think I teased up the question, the reason we don't use the index to reference a collection of manifests is we're trying to make sure everything is immutable and we don't want to go back and change digest of things that point to lots of things. So each one of the signatures are independent signatures. There's no um, persistence in a registry that says here's a, a physical collection of signatures that would have to get updated and replicated and, and so on and so forth. So with that, I think I've done the verbal discussion and I'll pause for thoughts and feedback. What was the feeling with the ICI discussion about this? I well, if you remember last week we wound. Oh, maybe you. Oh, yeah, that's to, right. We, yes, we yes we we wound up not discussing it. Yes. Yeah, we got we got a lot of great feedback from Derek, and I was hoping to get to this, but he um, we kind of left it, and I, I wanted to end the conversation by making sure there was an owner of the great conversations as opposed to getting into this. So um, I was actually I think I have this on the agenda for this Wednesday. Uh, to discuss with that working group. But like I said, it's, you know, chicken egg, I think cart course eventually becomes cart course, but right now it's chicken egg on where to start the conversation. I mean, coming from, you know, a registry operator perspective, this one I never really loved because as you know just as uh sam was kind of looking at it very confused i think anybody that understands registries would kind of barf on this um and, there, and there's some real cons to it it's not just logically it's that now we have to put something uh to parse uh media to, uh, config objects as they come in just to reference it while the underlying infrastructure for reference counting and garbage collection would be the same you still have this other entry point that makes me uncomfortable. I don't have to write any of that code, so I, I'm somewhat proxying my team. Um, the, and, and honestly, the team itself was going like, hey, uh, this depends on something the OCI hasn't agreed to yet, you know, with index. It's like, yes, that's true. It requires more changes. Yes, that's true. It's something that we know we want, so it's not unique for this. Um, and we're hoping that it's um, relatively low impact uh, with high value. That said, um, we, we'll see. The, um, and this kind of meets the bar of what registry operators would kind of expect. In fact, I didn't get a chance reading all of your comments, Sam. I don't know if you wanted to voice here uh, if you, what you felt about this one comparatively. I think the, the, things that I wrote in the comments are still true, which is I'm not entirely clear on, there's some, some, I think lacking clarity in the description for these, these options and I'm not understanding what all of the implications are. In particular, I'm interested in understanding whether like, whether we're expecting that the digest is going to change for the index because you're storing signature information in the index now or referencing signature information in the index. And so if, as the signature information gets updated, the digest of that signature changes and thus the digest of the manifest can change. This is the same downsides as the approach that I had proposed in like February. Right, but I, what I, so, and this is why I want to have the conversation rather than texting back and forth. Well, to be fair, I just read your feedback. So um, in fact, I didn't get a chance to read it all to be fair too. The, but the example here is we actually aren't updating signatures. The, the approach that we're doing here, and actually it doesn't matter what's all three options, is a signature is a new thing that gets pushed to a registry and you would never update the signature. You would submit a new signature. 
Um, you can delete a signature in theory. You can certainly revoke uh, signatures um, as part of the key revocation scenarios, but you never actually update um, anything here. That's actually explicit in these uh, designs because we've said from a requirement, we said we don't want to have anything change on the user's uh, description of what they're deploying, if they deploy with the digest or deploy with a tag. And I'm trying to be really careful to not do anything where um, any referenced information other than, you know, whatever change and digest by definition don't change. Um, because in, in Azure, we have geo replications that we want to keep in an eventual consistent state. Um, but also that's just a microcosm of what we're doing where we're saying content needs to move or not move. I keep on saying move. Content needs to be able to copied between registries from Docker Hub to my registry from my dev registry to my product registry to from my cloud-based registry to my on-prem replica. Um, so we wanted to make sure that there's never anything that changes. It's always additive. Sure, I, like I get that because all of these objects are effectively going to be immutable in the registry. The question is, what does the client see? What does, what is the response to like a, a client retrieving a manifest or retrieving an index look like? And is it going to retrieve a different index over time with a different digest? Okay, so like this that's is how tag, maybe tag this resolution gets, works. And maybe this gets into the listing API. The, the assumption here is that an index is being used because it knows how to point to other things. The index wouldn't, and I, and I appreciate that in a multi-arc, index kind of space that indexes do get updated or the tags from an index get updated. In this case, there is, we're actually saying there's no tags, which could say is a different conversation, but the index never gets updated. So as I add new signatures, I add new indexes. And then I think the, the next question is, well, how do I get these? That's the conversation below of, there will, we're proposing a new API on distribution that says, give me uh, the list of things that reference this thing. And the list of things, we're, we're debating whether we want to have a signatures API, somewhat consistent with Notary v1 in the sense that Notary was a signature based thing. Um, or there's just a new API in a registry that says, give me dependent things that could be signatures or could be other things. Um, so if I think I if you're not tagging, if you're not tagging the index, then that makes sense. Okay. That just wasn't clear from the proposal. Ah, okay. Then yeah. you can to myself. So to be very clear, a multi arch image would have at least two, maybe three indices. The tag would point at the original index that was not modified, and there would be an extra index for every signature. Nilo, I'm sorry. I, 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 let me just make this note because we're being bad about capturing notes. So let me just make this. And we ask or we listen to uh, distribution spec PR. Uh, index reference doesn't explicitly declare no tags. Okay. Needs this for clarity. Okay, I'm sorry, Nilo. What were you saying? Uh, just to confirm and to be very clear, so a multi-arch image would have at least two, maybe three or more uh, indices. Uh, the original tag would uh, point at the original uh, index, which is never modified, and there would be an extra index for every signature. Is that right? So what I will, add, let me echo back what I think you asked and how I would see it, and I will make a note to put it into the spec, into this uh, example as well. So if I have uh, the hello, what do I have here? I have the net monitor software. So let's say the net monitor software was just a manifest. It would have an index that's a signature. But now let's say, which I think is what you're asking, if the net monitor software has both Linux and Windows, I just like using those for the most simplistic instead of different variations. Of it, um, then there would be a multi arc index for that net monitor software. And that's a standard multi-arc index that we all know and love, or know and hate and love, want to hate, want to love. Um, sorry, just having fun with last week's conversation. The, and then if I wanted to sign that index, 
the multi-arc index, I would have another index that was a, a type signature. And if I wanted to sign the Linux and Windows images individually, there would be another index of types notary v2 signature that could also get persisted. So I can show, I will paint a diagram of that to show that in its ex ex uh, exacerbated, exploded view. All right, thank you. But is, and is that what you're asking or and was there a concern or are you just asking for clarity? Yeah, I just want to want it to, to confirm the, my understanding. Okay. How does that fit, Sam, or do you want to jump to the listing API to get more clarity on your question? I think it's up to you wherever you want to drive this. <laughs> okay, well, I'm trying to make sure everybody's comfortable with it, with the, you know, get answers to their questions and, and run that. So that's kind of the model there is that a, an index is of type notary v2 and it has pointers to content. And I guess it's probably more the OCI conversation group will probably more passion whether we go this one or this one. So uh, the, a, the APIs that we're now going to talk about actually don't matter. So now let's talk about, uh, there's two part with linking. Um, I think linking we basically resolved there. Originally, the thing with option one is in order to link the signature with the thing it's signing, um, we were gonna have to parse the config object. I don't think anybody likes that idea from uh, the way it's proposed, manifest don't reference manifest. And I think we don't wanna get into the business of parsing object config objects if we don't want to, um, or make it required. The option two, there's a distinct linking API because it's the way index just work. So that's really nice. Uh, there was another option for actually putting these things individually and then uploading, uh, uh, oh, there's a completely separate signature upload API, which I think uh, Justin Cormack, we only have one Justin Kay. Cormack was suggesting like, hey, we, why are we making things unique to signatures when we don't have to? Because your question before is more on the auth model. If I wanted to put a limitation on who can upload signatures, then I might want to put a limitation on who can upload Helm charts or other things also. So let's consolidate that as much as possible. So that, that basically gets rid of option three. And what we're really talking about is let's use option four an index already knows how to reference it. There's nothing new in the persistence and linking model. It already does that. So that's the linking conversation. Um, I'm covering it more for, uh, for completeness as opposed to uh, where we're on. Now what we're really talking about is the discovery uh, signature. Okay, so signature discovery. So now this is what um, you're kind of, I think asking about Sam is when uh, the idea is I have the net monitor software. I know I'm referencing net monitor colon V1. I can also say net monitor, you know, digest if I want. We're not excluding either one of those. That's the thing I want. Please give me all the signatures related to that. So that's what we're proposing here is um, you basically get, it's very specific to signatures. Uh, in fact, you notice that it says, you know, here's your repo name. So uh, net monitor uh, manifests, and then this is the digest. And then there's a signatures object that hangs off of it. And then you would get a collection of, um, uh, uh, it's Monday, a collection of uh, descriptors. And you have all of these um, that are in here. Uh, so we're, we're kind of playing a little bit. I'm looking at this here. There was a, this is kind of an evolved conversation. In fact, this needs to be changed. This would actually, no, I'm sorry, this is right. Uh, what this is, is the, because signatures are indexes, you're basically getting back a digest of indexes. The, uh, I'm trying to decide how I want it. The, the thing that we don't really know about this one yet is we don't know which signature this is. So we don't think there'll be more than five or 10 signatures for a particular object because basically we're saying for every release digest, 
how many entities actually want to sign that thing. Um, over time, we know that there'll be updates to the net monitor software. Uh, and, but each update would have new signatures. But we know that there will be more than one. Uh, there will be, there's a high level of N. So it is, there is a paging API in it. But regardless, what I don't like about this so far is there's no way to actually um, know what, which signature. Because if I only want the Acme Rocket signature, then why do I have to get five signatures back just to figure out which one to get? Um, and that's what you're starting to see is there's a little bit of leakage because we're trying to figure out, hey, can I put some extra metadata on this that says, not only is this the X509 signature versus a GPG, whatever else we want to handle, but maybe I could put something in here that says, this is the Acme Rocket signature, this is the Docker IO signature or the Web and Network signature for the original software vendor. Just for completeness. I, I'm, still, I'm still confused by this example, though. You've got the same digest in here a couple times, and it's not clear what that digest refers to. So you yeah, have that. So that's that. why I, I did this stuff at the end, honestly. Um, we tried to put some examples in here to try to help di disambiguate. In fact, I was trying to figure out, can I put comments in the middle as to reference which one this is? Uh, yeah. So. Let me try to explain it and uh, then tell me how what we think how I could actually make this a little more clear. So what this is saying is, uh, let me remember, the res uh, what it's saying, so I'm asking for this digest and this digest, it should be, if it's not, it's a mistake, this should be the net monitor V1 software. That's the digest that represents that tag. So That's I want the digest of either the manifest or the index for the image that you're trying to get. Correct. To your to Milo's okay. previous question, if I had a multi arc index and I signed that, this would be the digest of that in that multi arc index. And I'm, I'm going to start using the word multi arc index just to make sure we're talking about it. It is a collection of images. In this case, we'll just say Windows and Linux. So if I've signed an index, that's what this would be. If I've only signed the Windows or Linux individual images and those are manifest, that then I've specifically asked I want the signature for that one then you know this ultimately is the thing that I'm trying to get the signatures for, which I can get it in direction of uh, with index as well. Did I add clarity or did I make that more confusing? That's fine. That's not the one I'm confused about. So if okay. you look at the response, yes, that same index now, or that oh, same digest appears twice. That's a mistake. Yes, you're right. Okay, that's yes, mistake. So what this should be is the signature for uh, Wabbit Networks and Acme Rockets. Because I've, I've got two signatures. Thanks, that yep. helps. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sorry to waste everybody's time on a copy paste error. Yeah, there's my notes. So, What's, so now I've got the, the collection of signatures and now, you know, we're kind of going, all right, now we have to figure out, well, how do I get the one I actually care about? Because I probably don't care about all the signatures. I'm probably looking for a specific signature on it and we don't have a good answer for that yet. Um, the other one is, and I was trying to build on what uh, Cormac was kind of bringing up last week about being generalistic on some of these things is, there's nothing really unique to signatures that I want to get a list of dependency objects on it. So should we have a generic listing? Um, and what I try to do there is I, if it's generic, then I don't really have a place to put specific things in it. I, what we were trying to do is at least say that, hey, here is, um, oh, and to, and just to show that there's some clarity there, this was supposed to be it looks like I have a different error here uh, because I see 53B. So here, what you would have is the two, the Acme Rockets and the Wabbit Network signature. And it now says, by the way, it references a manifest. If I asked it for, uh, give me the dependencies of this thing. Because what it's showing is, again, I'm asking for the net monitor software. And the net monitor software has uh, indexes uh, pointing to it. And two of them are signatures, and one of them is, uh, I guess, a multi arc manifest. I'll have to double check what my example is here. 
So uh, copy paste errors aside, um, if I have multiple signatures, I get multiples and I'm getting multiple indexes over time. The index itself, because there'll be no, there's a proposal of no tags. Of course, you could tag it, but from the signatures API or the get signature flow, um, you wouldn't get a, you're not really asking for a specific signature. You're asking for the signatures of a thing. And if anything, you're asking for the key type or who signed it. We're actually implicitly trying to say that the fact that it gets persisted as a digest, the fact that you could technically tag it is just interesting info, but that's not the authentic path that you would go down. Well, I, that we, the, the, there are use cases for to, for pointing at signatures too. Which a specific so so I can yeah walk me through what you're thinking to see. If well, I mean, so um, um, if you want to refer to the signed the signed object itself such that it's not valid if the signature goes away so it's not that i want to be able to get the signature and ultimately of course i know what i'm getting you want to actually you're saying i'm explicitly referring to that particular signature and whatever it's signed is what i I'm, i want as opposed to Hey, I'm trying to get this thing and I want to make sure it's signed by the entity I trust. And it happens to have a, a digest on it. You actually want to go from the signature as a scenario. Yeah. Okay. Makes, makes sense. I'm trying to think of what the, the use case for that. And it, well, I mean, in, in the all the tough use cases are like that, where you refer to signed objects. And because you know which signature you want them to be signed with, because it's part of the protocol design. And then other cases where, you know, I want to refer to um, the exact image that Sam signed for me last week, not, you know, the, the um, not this, I want to specify, Sam gave me a signed object last week, this is it, as opposed to Sam recommended an object for me last week and signed it, which is a slightly different question. But you yeah. might want to, because it might be, it might then have a different signature by Sam and um, I, I, need, I want to be able to talk about the specific one. What I'm kind of listening for, I'm trying to figure out, is this wind up in this pinning, I guess it's part of the pinning model and there's times where you do want pinning um, to something specific. And I was sort of hoping to be clear and hadn't really thought all the way through is that what you're pinning to is the object you're trying to ultimately deploy and either the tag is locked or you can reference it at its digest and the signature is the signature of the entity you trust. You know, in other words, you're saying, hey, I, I trust Acme Rockets and I'm trying to deploy this. You're trying to say that I actually have this very specific signature that I'm referencing. And I guess if you're going that way or going through the digest of the thing you're referencing or a lock tag, either in either case, you can't do a security update to it because you're, you've made an explicit choice to pin it. And it's, I don't know if it's any better or worse either way, so. I would say for that for individual management of signatures, you would of course refer to them individually. Um, and so once you do that, the signature contains the manifest digest so you can get to an image from it. Mm -hmm. But for most of the workflows, if you are referring to an image, I would just go for with the manifest digest of the image then you have some policy that verifies that it is signed correctly. 
Right. But if you are talking about the image where it's signatures as a single unit. Yeah, I think you're kind of walking through the same thought process. You know? And I, I, Justin, I see what you're doing. It's, and it's from a signature, like from truly trying to manage the signatures, that makes perfect sense. The thing is, would I tell the Docker or Container D client, hey, deploy this thing and I'm referencing it by its signature? Or I have some other infrastructure that I, that I want to reference it by its signature, but my deployment would still be, hey, I'm trying to deploy this manifest and it happens to have a signature I trust. I'm trying to figure out how this gets into the workflows and are we making things more, are we going to create more confusion? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's reasonable to imagine that we start with the signature and the actual image, image manifest is just a content storage and happens to be the duplicated. And I have two images with two different signatures that happen to share the manifest. But that would imply changing basically all of the deployment tooling to be able to recognize such, such digest uh, references and to interact through the signature. Yeah. Whereas if we keep with the manifest digest everywhere, then only the single piece of code or those pieces of code that specifically need to care about signatures can use the lookup API and deal with signatures and everything else just sees a manifest. Of course, if you mirror an image and don't know that you need to mirror the signatures, it's going to break. But most of the rest of the ecosystem just doesn't need to care and it continues to work. I was also kind of thinking of another scenario is let, let's just say that somebody wanted to build that tool chain that says I do want to reference by keys, by signatures, sorry. And it does go figures out the manifest that would ultimately deploy. And in that case, what happens if, and I'm saying this out loud and I probably will finish realizing I said something stupid, but if I have, if I'm referencing a signature and ultimately I'm revoking that signature, does that mean the manifest is no longer valid? Or what if I'm that signature, or even the signature expired, the key expired, but it's still valid, and I have a new key, that I that mean that deployment based on that signature would fail, which maybe is the intent, as opposed to referencing the original manifest, and yes, the old signature is expired. And I mean, it probably is the intent if you have a signature that says do not use after next Thursday, it probably means don't deploy with this after next Thursday. This is why I... That's why you specifically asked. Yes, me. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're providing that kind of information, presumably that's yeah. the right behavior. The thought process I'm kind of going through is like you have this shirt and it's got a tag that's the physical tag that hangs out the shirt and it's got good intentions for providing like how to wash it and what it's made from but is it sticking out so far that it becomes something you keep on pulling on and it's annoying? And did we, is there something about this design that is annoying and creates confusion as opposed to, there's, there's, a, there's a piece of what Justin's pulling on that actually gives some like, powerful capabilities. I worry, I'm, one, I'm trying to think through, does it create some confusion because it sticks out too far as opposed to it's possible? Like I really, I hadn't, I was actually, it, there was nothing in it that said you couldn't tag it, but I wasn't thinking there's any flows that refer to a tag on the signature. I don't know. Maybe that, that's the part of the prototype, right? This is exactly like put the picture out and Justin says, there's no bidet. <laughs> so. Hold on, sorry. Maybe I missed something. When I'm looking at the signatures here, I see a digest. What is the digest for exactly? The digest of the signature? Uh, the die so the signature in, in all these proposals, the digest is sorry, the signature is contained in a config object, and the config object is uh, likely stored inside of a manifest config. Sorry, index config. So the digest is actually the index that references the signature object that stores the signature. I see. Okay. Interesting. That's a I mean, level of the, a config object has a digest itself, to be completely clear. I mean, I think there's an example up here. Uh, yeah, so here's the digest of the config object. But ultimately, you're trying to reference the digest of this thing or this thing. So in, in 
what we were just discussing, what Justin was discussing is this index, if we go with the proposal that, I, that I'm proposing with examples, but you know, the other examples, is this would be the signature. Uh, this one's signed by Wabbit Networks. This one's signed uh, by Acme Rockets. And yes, sorry, uh, I now see the duplication here too. Uh, so the uh, digest would be of this index for Wabbit Networks or a digest of this one. Oh, no, I see it references. No, I take that back. These are both referencing that one. Um, and what Justin's saying is you could actually put a tag on this, not just a digest. Okay, um, and if you wanted to reference this by its digest or tag of the signature itself, you can absolutely find the thing it's signed. The way I've been kind of go about it is I want the signatures for this thing, and of course I want the Wabbit Network signature, uh, which I might have a couple of Wabbit Network signatures because I have the old one and the new one. But I, I guess what I'm kind of getting at is this is the point of the prototype. We'll put it in a branch now, a uh, prototype branch, and we can play with different uh, permutations of this. But what was, the, I think you were trying to pull on something and go somewhere else, Trishan. What were you thinking? No, I was just trying to figure out where the signatures were, because uh, I don't see it. I just see digest objects. And so this, this helps to clarify a bit. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, everything in a registry has a digest and everything is a descriptor. So um, the signature itself is in the, the config object here. It's, it talked about further up the talk. I think you had joined a little bit after we were talking about that. Yes, which is why it's missing some context. Yes, sir. This is the same PR. So we just real quick, you were originally asking a bunch of stuff. I, we had a separate PR that was the JWT. We realized PRs and PRs were too confusing. So we merged that into the same PR. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to take this one and put it into a branch and we could have issues and new PRs on that branch. So you'll be able to continue to open up issues or make comments on it. But we we have a, another PR related to the tough uh, metadata one. Okay, so sounds like there's some interesting thoughts that we want to experiment with putting tags on signatures. Um, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, the, the thing of whether we do a generic one or a signatures one, right now we're kind of thinking of doing a signature specific one because the generic one I know has got holes already. Um, the other place, just for the sake of time, that we definitely need some feedback is there's a couple of ways to do paging. We absolutely recognize that we must have a paging API in here and it shouldn't be optional. It's, you know, whatever, meaning that uh, if you only want one result, that's fine, but we make sure that the API has paging built in. There's different ways of doing paging. Um, so we're looking for feedback on which people want. The, Tag listing has a specific way of doing paging. Uh, the Google designs have a different one. The Microsoft APIs have a different one. I couldn't find, I'm sure there's an Amazon API guidelines. We couldn't specifically find one. If somebody has it, great. We just need some feedback on which one people prefer. I actually don't have a particular preference. So I just want one. I think that there was some issues with the way the tag listing did it to, that was not fully thought out. I don't remember exactly what it is. So that's where we can use some feedback from folks. I think that was the extent of what was in here. Because the signature polls are just, by the time you've done the uh, uh, the lookups, you basically are pulling like you pull any other artifact from a registry. So there's nothing special there. So six minutes left for time, additional thoughts, feedback. I got nothing, this looks good. Um, I look forward to reviewing the PR. Okay, <laughs> I just like the answer. I got nothing. Um, so what we're thinking we're going to do, um, so Shiwe and Avaral are uh, on Asia time. So we usually meet uh, US Tuesday nights, uh, APAC India Wednesday mornings. Uh, what we'd like to do is move forward with, and, I, and I'll obviously have the conversation with the OCR group uh, Wednesday, is move forward with this design 
where we will rev the, con uh, rev the index, we will add a config object to it, and we'll make PRs on the, the fork of the distribution spec we have under the Notary project. And we would go with uh, the API listing of signatures. And the only question we kind of really have is which API, you know, paging API we would go with. I think there was a lenience towards the Google APIs, I think is where, uh, I can't remember if I was leading there or somebody else was leading there or whatever. Um, but we'd like, what we'd like to do is over the next week or two um, is get this, the rest of this end to end working. And what I mean by the end rest of this, uh, shoot, where is, let me go to the PRs, this, this picture we have here. Oops, that was changed. Read me view file. We'd like to get this, this workflow completed end to end in this picture. Uh, I've been talking with the OPA folks. Um, they're interested in writing an OPA uh, policy manager that can look at the content, like a signature that comes across and says, hey, if this thing, if the signature doesn't match the registry, I'll cause a failure. If there's an S bomb that's in it that references a package, it could cause a failure. So we wanna really try to get these end to ends working uh, even though we know there's quirks that we want to work on, we want to see what the whole picture looks like. And again, the analogy is back to that, you know, you're building a house, a Sagrada Familia kind of thing. Until you can kind of see the bigger picture, you can't see that, oh, this little microcosm thing over here is, that's not even the beginning of the issue. This other thing is huge. Or this whole thing looks so great that actually I'm okay with that little thing now. Um, so we really want to get, we're, we're kind of, I don't say we're rushing, but we definitely want to get the whole end-to-end -end workflow to some extent complete so that we can have a better analysis of do we like the way this thing's shaping up? Uh, and then we can go back and work on the, the, the individual details. And you know, a, a big detail, of course, is tough in the signature format, which is some other PRs, but in the end-to-end -end workflow, whether there's a better rollback protection through tough or it's just a signature. Um, that's a great detail, but does the um, policy enforcement, you know, kick in the way we want uh, for something that we get deployed? That's also why you hear me pushing for like a branch to check things in so that we can, you know, have a stable place to pull from. Mila, I'm actually wrestling. Are you the representative from Red Hat at this point? Because with uh, a couple other folks leaving, I, I don't mean to call them out. I'm, just, I'm glad we have some Red Hat representation here. That's what I was really trying to get to. I can't speak, say I speak for all of Red Hat. Uh, I work on the container runtime team dealing with Podman, Cryo, and the initial manifest infrastructure in there. I have basically no connection with the query registry people. Okay, that's a good that's a good place to start, right? And we and having Jesse here, thank you, Jesse. I keep on forgetting to uh, uh, reference you also. So uh, we have Jesse here from AWS. Yeah, no worries. I'm I'm just trying to catch up and uh, try to hopefully be useful here soon. <laughs> okay. So our goal is like we know what it's like to try to make changes to AW, you know, ECR or ACR or any other register, certainly Docker Hub. So we want to experiment here and get comfortable with this end-to-end -end experience. So that's why we originally did the uh, fork of Docker distribution over here, was we wanted to make sure that we had a, ref a place to do reference implementation uh, changes and experiment. So we'll get this, you know, as we make the PRs for the new APIs we're talking about, we'll, we'll make them here. So this way we can all experiment. And only after we're really, 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 really happy um, will we start looking at things to do, um, you know, on our individual registries. Uh, and uh, Josh Belitsky was, we had this conversation in some place, I can't remember lost track of where, uh, that he was actually thinking of using this in bundle bar. Um, so we'd actually have like a fun incubation project that we could, you know, maybe test out some of these experiences as well. So that's, that's what I had for today. Um, by all means, so the plan is, as we put in the notes, we'll make a branch, we're going to merge this, uh, not this PR, the 
uh, the JWTPR, uh, JWTPR, um, into that branch. If anybody has a recommendation for the branch name, prototype something, prototype prototypical, I don't know, we'll figure out something. Um, and then open up issues and other things on it. And then we'll hopefully get the distribution uh, portion working this week. There is a bunch of pieces that will fall out of it because we've been ignoring index for a while because we knew we had to solve this uh, index config object. We'll have to add index support into ORAS. Um, there's some other cleanup we wanted to do with ORAS that came up around submitting ORAS to OCI. So uh, just getting this piece, this next piece will take us a bit, uh, but we're hoping we'll make good progress on that going forward quickly. If there's nothing else, we'll move on to our next whatever else people have for the day. So thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Bye, everybody. See you later.